I did something not too out of character for me, but it's still fun to share anyway. Friends, the Gunzi Tumby anniversary set, she's here, she's in my possession. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with her today, but I do know it's gonna be good. So I hope you'll stick around. So there's multiple reasons today's video is pretty exciting for me. One of them being that it is sponsored by my friends at Felt Right, but more on that later. Okay, it is time to get into this. I'm trying to figure out, oh, that was easy enough. So fun, oh my heavens, friends. This is real time. So I will be honest, if I say anything that's incorrect, uh, we'll pop up some info on the screen to correct anything I might say that's incorrect. But friends, I wanted to do this real time. And what that means is I'm actually like doing the things and talking at the same time instead of a voiceover. This, okay, the presentation of this uh, is already exquisite. Now, is this like fancy wood? No, it's like probably balsa wood, you know. There are these elastic bands, it's a one band, holding everything together, however lightly it may be, doing its job. And then they are stacked, oh, stacked trays. And look at this little lift for the top tray. I mean, this is just little swatch cards, of course. Oh, oh. Okay, what I know about this set is that it's all of their colors. This is what I understand. Maybe that is incorrect, but from all my research, that's what I understand. The Nouveau, the very difficult, as at the, at the time of filming, the Nouveau set of theirs was very difficult to get. That is all included in here, however, not in the same order. So all the Nouveau colors are in this bad boy. All right, look. <laughs> okay, this is just like sensory playground for a painter right now, all right? These are in a color order, I would say. You've got shimmers. I believe they've got like the, what are they called? The shadow colors are also in this set. We will find out lots of shimmers here. And I'll tell you what, I have been warming up to some shimmery watercolor action. I, I'm just obsessed with this presentation. Um, little insert, telling you all the things. This insert is listing, um, Color numbers, I, I think these are proprietary numbers. They're not pigment numbers, proprietary to um, Gunzi Tombi. And then the color names, which, you know, for whatever that's worth for you. Now, I'm gonna do something here because friends, I'm not feeling like swatching. I'm just not maybe in another video. But what I'm gonna do here, that is definitely from the Nouveau set, absolutely. I'm going to, with a, I'm gonna actually use a Sharpie. I'm going to label the tray for my future benefit. Uh, do I have a Sharpie? It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be a Sharpie. And I'm just gonna label it. Obviously I can't tip this over, but I'm just gonna put number one. I put number one, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put number one small on the back of this swatch card. That way I can separate them and I know down the road what I'm dealing with if I decide to swatch these. Hopefully that makes sense. I have made way too many organizational mistakes in my watercolor journey that I'm starting to learn my lessons and plan better. So we're gonna get that done. You know, I heard some reviews that um, that the quality of the wood of the box was kind of junky. I don't know why I'm thinking maybe because, you know, the wood is unfinished, which I actually think is just lovely, but I find it to be quite sturdy. It is unfinished, but it, I think it's just w very well done. All right, tray number four, swatch card number four. Cause I just, I don't feel like swatching right now, friends. I feel like getting right down and dirty into the painting of this. I'm not gonna throw this away. This is left, gosh, I feel like I put that in my hair. Now, I am curious about the logistics of like how I am going to lay these out as I paint, because that's interesting to me, right? 
So let's, let's just, cause they're, you know, th this is a lot of real estate here. A lot of real estate friends, but that's okay. I could see me reorganizing these at some point in the future. All right, let's get into this friends. First things first, I'm gonna give these all a good spray. I think so many of these here are from the Nouveau collection. I'm not really worried about what's this, what's that at this point. I just am very much feeling like diving in. Maybe it's because I've been doing a lot of traditional swatching over the last few weeks, honestly, since the beginning of 2023. And I, maybe I'm just, I've got my fill for a few moments. I mean, yeah, look, they've got all the opal, all the jewel tone shimmers. Yeah, this, this, I think these are the shadows. I don't know if that's what they're called, shadows, but whatever. I think you know what I mean. The ones that are like, everything's mixed with black or something but I just want to get right down into it I I don't I don't have a plan Stan I'm just getting into it full disclosure friends my painting water is dirty I've been painting all day and I didn't change it one thing to know about Japanese style watercolor is that it is not designed it's not designed for layers it's designed for a Japanese style watercolor painting which is very immediate very kind of single layer type situation. The paint itself, even though it is watercolor, um, it is much, much more opaque than traditional watercolors. Now, when I say layering, that it's not meant for layering, I more so mean glazing because you can certainly layer. Like I'm probably going to layer some detailing on top. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do a big leaf situation here because that's what I feel like doing. And I am very, in, I'm just instinctively letting myself be drawn to the colors that my eye goes to. As soon as I, my eye hits over here, I'm not overthinking. Um, just a fantastic way to get acquainted with a new palette, uh, in my humble opinion. Look at that, isn't that stunning? I love that, where was that teal, that teal? That wasn't the teal, but that's still pretty. It's this one, look at this, you ready for it? I'm twisting that brush in my hand as I kind of create the shape. Watch me twist that brush in my hand. Look at that, isn't that just gorgeous, woo! All right, let me get down in here. So you're seeing a more opaque effect when this paint is used in mass tone, meaning fuller or completely full coverage, you're gonna see it dry with a, a certain sheen to it. Not a shimmer, not a sparkle, a sheen. Um, so that can take a little getting used to. I actually used to recommend Gonzi Tambi for beginners. I did stop recommending them for beginners because they are so unique in their characteristics, their, you know, their texture, that it could potentially become a frustration point for some folks and but still folks tell me that you know they they bought this uh this brand as a beginner on my recommendation and they still love them so much so look at how the the creamy more obviously there's white pigment mixed into that to make that peach and how it's just blending and exploding with the more saturated colors and I'll tell you this brand the Japanese style watercolor is definitely inspiration for my own palette that's the Art for Joy Sake palette. This palette has a full range of, you know, watercolor personalities from classic sheer to fully opaque watercolor. And Gunsy Tumby was definitely inspiration for me. I'm just loving my three quarter inch dagger brush here for this. It's allowing me, I'm gonna do a little shimmer. It's allowing me to really create these large and in charge brush strokes. A little more shimmer. I'm trying not to be as like anti-shimmer as I once was. It's hard to be anti-shimmer when you start to see some of the new shimmer formulations, especially in the handmade watercolor realm, are creating such curious effects, granulating effects. It's hard, hard to, to kind of poo-poo shimmer these days. Look at this chartreuse. Ooh, I think this is part of the Nouveau set. Oh, heavens to Betsy. So good. This is so what I needed today. Friends, it's so empowering when you become increasingly in tune with what you need creatively and when. Let me explain. I've been painting live all day. I've been painting in a way. I've been teaching. I've been being taught by another today. 
And everything that I did today was kind of pre-planned. And so I just felt in my soul, like I really just needed to be my loosey goosey, crazy wild, you know, exploratory self. But you know, being that self-aware on your on your journey, oh, that is definitely part of the Nouveau set. That's gorgeous. Being that self-aware takes time and it takes um, habitual, it takes practice, habitual practice. Is that an oxymoron? Is that a double? I don't know, whatever. But I think you know what I mean, right? But when we get better and better and better at realizing, gosh, I'm kind of exhausted of this type of art practice for today. I still feel like I have it in me to create. So I'm going to go ahead with the opposite of that and, and create. It can be so empowering because then you're able to quickly tap into really satisfying art making. And so, yeah, I'm going very abstract here, at least at the moment, before I start adding in some details. And it it is soothing my soul. And I can only believe that it's soothing my soul because it was indeed exactly what I needed at the moment. So, little life lesson uh, for today. Oh, look at that. Now I'm glazing. I'm doing a little bit of like fast and loose glazing there and it's working. So you might be wondering, well, if these paints aren't made for layering or traditional glazing, what will happen if I try to glaze with them? It's not that you can't glaze with them. You'll just see, you won't get the clarity that you would get with traditional sheer watercolor pigments you will get, things will get muddier quicker, right? So, you know, when you are layering with these, you wanna keep a light touch. Uh, better yet, you wanna make sure that your first layer is completely dry before trying to layer over top. Things like that can really help you push the envelope with the capabilities of these particular paints. But, so it's not that I'm sitting here saying you can never layer with Gonzi Tombi, but you might you might hop onto the struggle bus if you're not kind of fully uh, prepared for some of the, the potential hiccups that might come with it. So I need a break. This painting needs to dry a little bit. And while we're at it, I feel like you deserve an update about this crazy studio redo that I've been working on since last fall. You might remember, I gave you a little update a while back and I basically painted everything white and bought a bunch of white furniture and well, I was left with a really pretty but super echoey room. And for someone who creates a lot of content like this and does a lot of voiceovers, the echoes were definitely a deal breaker. But enter felt right. And stick with me friends, because I'm gonna give you a peek at where the studio is at now. It's so close to being finished. And of course, we're gonna get back to those paints. So as the name implies, Felt Right is a company that makes these felt wall tiles and they're super easy to install. You can actually use them as like a pin board and they dampen sound. Being that I work from home, I have a noisy three-year-old and a crazy seven-year-old and all the things I needed to figure something out and quick. Felt Right jumped in and sent me the most amazing gift and allowed me to pick out my own tiles. And I was able to build my sound dampened wall of joy. And let me tell you what, the dogs can bark, the baby can cry, and you all aren't hearing it. And let me tell you what, you were hearing it because you told me you were hearing it. And that was all before Felt Right. They send you everything you need in a sweet little box and all the adhesive tabs. And I actually stuck mine to textured walls and not a single one has come loose or anything of the sort. So easy to install. I actually did these back in December while I was watching Christmas movies. I still have more of these bad boys to put up. And friends, I hope you consider putting up your own. And I have a discount code that might help with that. You're gonna follow the link in description or just go to feltright.com and use the code that's popping up on the screen right now. I was able to design my own pattern or I could choose from existing patterns that others have designed. So many color options. I actually ordered a sample kit first to make my choices. But anywho, friends, here is a look at where this studio is at. I couldn't be more thrilled. And this wall is at the center of it all. I'm feeling like I want to go in with some sharpness, with some detail. 
I don't know, what's this color? I don't have them swatched out yet, so I'm just, I'm just diving in blinds. Okay, let's go back up to this one, which is still damp, but it was one of the first strokes I made, and I should be able to add some linear detail. I'm using my triple zero from the Free From Fear brush collection. All the supplies will be linked below, friends but I'm actually feeling like I want the fluidity of my liner brush, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. And yeah, that feels more like it. I'm letting the color run out for some texture. Remember friends, I'm just creating a big old page full of big old fat leaves. Leaves are one of my comfort subject matters. I have a whole video about what, what that means. What's comfort subject matter? Uh, definitely one to bookmark and watch later. Uh, very eye-opening. And it honestly, discovering your comfort subject matter is going to help you be more in tune with what your creative soul needs at any given time. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? That one's pretty dry. Not fully dry, but it's pretty dry. Let me see the white. I want to, ooh, I just dirtied up my white. Big time. It's okay. I'll spray her down. Let's see how opaque this white is. Looks pretty decent. Yeah, it's all right. It's not as opaque as I thought it would be. We can use it heavier. That works, that works, that works. Like I said at the beginning, I'm just wing dinging it. I really have no plan, no plan. And I'm okay with the no plan stand. I'm just enjoying the fluidity of my brush strokes. I'm enjoying one of my favorite brushes right now. I'm being okay with just letting it guide me, letting the, the first strokes I made kind of guide my next strokes. I'm following some of the shapes and the silhouettes. Just trying to get in a zone of experimentation. That's it, a zone of experimentation. The liner brush on such a large page, you are gonna be re-wetting, like refilling your, your brush often. You're gonna be respraying these colors often, especially with such a large palette. This is a massive palette, friends. So you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, I sprayed the whole thing, right? But I haven't used a lot of these colors, so they're gonna dry right up. So you're gonna be spraying a lot, which is fine. It's not gonna hurt them. I am doing some brush sketching, some watercolor sketching, where I'm literally just using my liner brush very much like I would a pencil or like a micron pen or something very similar. And just, you see how often I'm reloading here and just kind of sketching over top, so fun. I'm using cold press watercolor paper, so very easily I'm picking up on the texture of that paper you can either be frustrated by it or you can lean into it. And I always choose to lean into it because I'm a fan of texture. I'm a fan of texture. You know, I don't have to be sold on Gonzi Tumby. I'm not here to do a review. I am already a big, 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 big fan. And so I'm here just to play and to chat paint. And I hope you are just getting something out of this. If you are, I would so love for you to head into comments. Let me know what you think. Have you tried Gonzi Tumby? Um, maybe you have this set. I'd love to hear if you do. Do you have a favorite color? I gotta tell you, this chartreuse, this one, ooh, that's, that one is giving me the feels for sure. But yeah, head into comments. Let's talk about this brand and what, you, what you're feeling about it. And while you're at it, friends, if you do feel like you're getting any value out of this experience, I would appreciate if you give this video a boop, friends, that's a like. And that is just a great way for you to help out my channel. And I am always, always so appreciative when I see those boops coming through. I'm just going over top here, very light brush is kind of picking up some of the, the color that I sketched with earlier, which I think is cool. You can see here I'm layering and I am getting kind of that muddiness. It actually works there, but you could see very quickly how layering these colors, they just don't shine through each other as easily as some other watercolor brands do, just by the nature of their opacity. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get pretty intense here this is something you could do. Not a lot of water on my brush, but a lot of paint. Press, drag, and lift. I'm reloading each time 
you can layer over with a mass tone uh, series of brush strokes. And that is popping. I love that. That is fun. You're almost just starting to use these a little bit like gouache. I just want to explore all these colors. But I also, I just so much want to do some kind of different colorways, like limited palettes with these. Oh, there's so much opportunity with this set, and I am very excited to be exploring it. There's going to be a lot more to come with this bad boy. I'm now using my number 12. I'll be honest, there isn't a rhyme or reason. I did start with a bigger brush with the three quarter inch dagger, but what I've done from there, there hasn't been, you know, a compositional purpose or a kind of outcome purpose that has driven me to make particular choices about my brushes. I am in a true joy state, a true experimental state, and I'm just letting whatever happens, happens, whether it's quote unquote successful or not, that is not of my concern right now. All right, what other color? Oh, this is an interesting, I think this is off screen, but it's a beautiful taupey color. Do some of that down here. Look at you, you are purdy. You can really see the opacity in that one. Look at that. Get some chartreuse going. You notice with these paints, they re-wet. You just brush them with a little bit of water and they become like syrupy and soft and uh, just glorious. I love that. I definitely feel like I've been drawn to the Nouveau colors. If you're not sure what I'm chatting about, I'm gonna pop that up on screen. There is a newer set. Uh, it's a subset of this particular set of Art Nouveau colors. It's been very hard to get. It goes out of stock almost as quickly as it comes back in stock in different spots um, all over the internets. And it's a very like Art Nouveau, very creamy, toned down colors. So like these mauves and some of these greens and yeah. So I've been trying to get my hands on that set. And that was one of the reasons that I justified buying this big, big, big set because I was like, well, all the Nouveau colors are in there. Okay, Chrissy, keep telling yourself that. That's why you needed this set. But I'm, I've definitely been gravitating towards those and you can see that in the, the color palette that's evolving here. Oh, lovely, 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 fun. Lovely fun. This is just a great exercise that can turn into a satisfying piece of art uh, where you just, you start big, big leaves, big strokes, and slowly start to whittle down and then layer and layer with linear detail, smaller strokes, darker strokes, and oh, what fun we have, right? You're basically creating an all over pattern, which actually is extremely forgiving. So it's a wonderful way to paint as a beginner to create an all over pattern because you don't have to follow all the same rules. I mean, do you ever really have to follow the rules? No, I mean, you're on my channel, right? I mean, come on, let's be honest. But you can break the rules, break one rule after another when you're creating a, a pattern that's all over edge to edge because some of the, the rules like compositionally can be more laxed and still give you a very successful result. Let's go ahead back in and kind of get some of this white in here. Oh, I like my little happy accident. I dripped white. I'm gonna do more of that to see what happens. I'm gonna see some blooming happening here. Love that. Ooh, yeah. I'm doing that with the number 12 round and loaded very, very juicy with the white. Now, spray things down and then go back in and get more intense blooming. I mean, look what happened here. I mean, can we talk about happy flipping accident right there? And now it's starting to look like a rash, but no, it's actually, it's, it's okay. It's a cool rash, whatever. I feel like going in with a felt pen, so I'm gonna and just do some super basic leafy shapes within that. I'm not even holding this pen for maximum control, so I'm getting kind of quirky moments, right? And we're gonna be okay with that. Let's do that in a couple other spots. A little bit over here. Good, a little bit over here. How are we feeling? Do we like it? 
Do, is this inspiring? Is this something you want to try? Let me know in comments. I'd love to hear like what colors you're most drawn to. A little bit here. Oh, that's damp. I'm going to ruin my pan. I'm going to ruin my pan. Wouldn't be the first time. Would not be the first time. I love it. I love just the indulgent feeling of having this many colors in this presentation. Big page, big for me. I know this isn't a large painting for by a lot of folks standards, but for me it is. Now friends, if you wanna learn more about Gonzi Tombi and what it can do for you if you've not tried this brand yet, I want you to watch this video next because I actually review this brand in much more depth uh, along with a bunch of other brands. So go ahead, watch that. And until next time, friends, I wish you all the happy painting.